Hey there! Welcome or welcome back to Intended Being, where we help you be the you you intend to be. My name's Kevin. We got Carl here and Buddy here. They're pretty excited. I'm pretty jazzed because by the end of today's video, we will be a third of the way through our nine video workshop, all helping you develop a vision, plan, goals, habits, focused around who you intend to be and the life you intend to live. Now, I don't know if you saw it, but in video two, we did what's called a need study to help you dive down and figure out what basic needs you need to meet in the next year or half year or two years, whatever time frame you're looking at. The basic needs you need to meet in, to, in order to feel more fulfilled and to feel more of the feelings that you really want to feel. Right? If you haven't checked it out, please feel free to do so. If you have checked it out, please feel free to put some comments down below, either in this video or in the comments section for video two. Let us know how it went for you. Do you have any questions? Did you have any surprises or inspirations? Or is your vision starting to form in a way that you hadn't expected? Whatever you might want to let us know, please do. We'd love to hear from you. Now, also, we have really good news. As you can see, we now have cards available for sale. And hopefully by the time I get this video loaded on YouTube, we'll also have free PDF of our cards. And those should both be in the links below. So let's dive into this video, video three, where we're going to talk about your values and your passions. Because really, what's the point in creating a vision and plans and all that stuff if one, you're not passionate about it, and two, it doesn't align with your values? doesn't make much sense. Let's start with values. Now, the first thing I want you to do is notice that below in the notes section, if you click on the little more word with the underline on it, you'll see several links to lists of values. Now, some of these lists are shorter with 20 or 30 some values. And those lists are lists of values that supposedly all humans share. We all have these common values. And then there's lists with a lot more, like a little over 100 values. And those are lists of just possible values that each individual might have. And now you're wondering, well, what makes it a value, Kevin? That's a very astute question, my friend. So what makes it a value, according to Shalom Schwartz, who's a, one of the biggest researchers on human values, a value needs to have six traits. One, you have to have some kind of emotional connection to it. Right? Maybe not all the time, but usually when you think about this value, you're connected to it emotionally. Two, it needs to act in some way as motivation for you to make decisions or to do certain things. Right? You say, oh, because I have this value, I'm going to do this instead of that, or I'm just going to go pursue this, which is really important for the vision and plans we're making because you want to have motivation. Three, basically value is something that you have pretty long term or it's pretty consistent over time. Let's say that. So it's, values aren't something that you change day to day. Now they can change, especially if there's a, a pretty major event in your life, or they can change slowly over time. But from today to next week to next month, you're likely to have pretty similar set of values, if not the same set of values. Four, we use values to evaluate our decisions, our behaviors, the decisions and behaviors of others, policies, all kinds of stuff. And yes, if you're thinking by evaluate, I mean that a lot of times we judge, you are right. Five, our values are ordered. And each of us have a different order, right? So we have an order of priority in terms of which ones are more important to us, which is important because the sixth one, the sixth element of a value is that a lot of times we have to deal with trade-offs, right? Between, and there's a lot of situations where we can't appease all of our values at the same time. And a really good example is a lot of times we have to decide whether our value for forgiveness is more important than our value for honesty or our value for responsibility or respect when we're deciding whether or not to forgive other people who have disrespected us or lied to us or something like that, or even ourselves for things that we've done and we really feel bad about. 
Now, that all sounds kind of straightforward, but I want to tell you, when it comes to our values and especially making judgments and decisions, a lot of times it is anything but rational. And a lot of this, a lot of the research that shows this can be attributed to stuff started by uh, Jonathan Haidt, who found basically that a lot of times what happens is we have an emotional reaction or a physical reaction to something, and then we, we make a decision or we act right at that moment. And then after we make our decision or act or judge someone in some way, after we do that, our brain then spins around and says, okay, how do I rationalize what we just did? What values can I bring up and say, okay, I made that, I judge this person this way because of these values that I hold, right? Think of it kind of like if you walk in to a room where some, for a little kid is doing something that they know is wrong. You walk in and they see you and you can just tell, you can see the wheels spinning in their heads. Like, how am I going to explain this? You know, oh, that's what our brains do to us, but they do super quick, right? So we're fooling ourselves on a somewhat frequent basis as to why we do and judge others in the ways that we do. And to give you an example, what they did in their experiment, using fart spray, they basically showed that participants who smelled the fart spray were much more likely to be disgusted or likely to show more disgust with someone's actions than participants who did not smell fart spray. And so the idea here, and that's been kind of shown in many experiments after this, is you smell this fart, or the spray anyway, and it's disgusting. <laughs> so you get this sensation of disgusting, which starts giving you an emotion of disgust. And that disgust then gets projected on whatever your decision or behavior you're going to have. So the next thing you're doing is you're judging somebody else's actions. So that disgust gets transferred to their actions and now you're disgusted with them when on a normal day, maybe you wouldn't be. So I say this because I think self-awareness is pretty important. And so what this tells us is a lot of times when you judge someone in some way or act a certain way, do something that you feel is justified based on your values, a lot of times it wasn't your values that led you to do that. It was your emotional reactions. So that might not help you in the moment. There's no way you can change yourself so that you don't have these instant reactions. We're talking microseconds, but it's something that you can train yourself to think about after the fact and say, wait a minute, why did I really do that? Is it really because I have this value or was something else going on with me at that moment or that day? Was I already in a bad mood or something like that? Now, with that in mind, that kind of brings up, well, where do our values come from? And the whole point of our values is to keep us as individuals alive and thriving and to keep our groups or our species alive and thriving. So there's individual based values like pleasure, and self-respect and self-growth. But there's also a kind of group level or societal level values that we hold, like obedience or tradition or caring for one another, stuff like that, that helps our group or society survive and thrive. So notice I say survive and thrive a lot. And that's because that's another major dimension which our values can be placed on, right? From surviving to thriving, our values range from, on the surviving side, you got security, protection, maybe strength, tradition, conformity, stuff like that, just to keep us alive. But then in order to thrive, you know, then you get into values like exploration, uh, learning, open-mindedness, stuff like that where we learn to explore and change as the world changes to, to adapt, right? But also to grow and to thrive. So it's not that any of these values are right or wrong. We all just apply them in different ways. And a lot of times we don't agree 
on how others apply their values versus we apply ours. One thing I want you to know is, depending on whether you're in a, you're looking at a value that's more focused on thriving versus more focused on surviving, they're going to connect to different emotions. Right? The more you're looking at surviving, the more you're looking at protecting from loss, stuff like that. So you're looking at emotions related to anxiety, fear, things like that. Emotions that are more like, we need to have this value or we're in trouble. Versus over here, it relates more to emotions such as inspiration, joy, right? So the reason I say this is important is because depending on where you are, what kind of mood you're in, what you're focused on, you may be a little more biased towards some values than others, right? If you might be more biased towards these that make you feel good. You might be more biased towards these that make you feel safe and less anxious. But either way, I want you to look at the values and try and see, okay, which ones do I find important for me, for the future, regardless of how I'm like feeling right now, but which ones do I really want to pay attention to as I make my plans and my vision? Now that we have a better idea of how our values relate to our lives, let's talk about how our values relate to our passions. And to do so, I want to talk about three very basic kind of abstract questions. First being, who am I or who are you? Then how do I fit in this world or how do you fit in this world? And what is my purpose or what's your purpose? All right. These are very abstract and obviously related questions. So it's not that these are isolated. Who I am is has a lot to do with what my purpose is. And that has a lot to do with how I fit in this world. And if you think about it, even though these are difficult questions to answer, a decent chunk of those answers are related to the values that we hold dear, right? My values will say a lot about who I am, what my purpose is, and how I fit in this world. But we're not going to answer these questions because these, these questions could take quite a while to answer. So instead, we're going to answer much more immediate versions of those questions, right? Like present day. So instead of who am I, we're going to answer who am I being? Like, right, who am I being right now? What am I prioritizing? What kind of person am I being? Stuff like that. And instead of how do I fit in this world, how am I relating? Right? Who or what am I spending my time with? What am I giving and what am I getting out of my relationships? Um, what communities am I a part of? How am I relating to my surrounding environment? Stuff like that. And then finally, what is my purpose? Translates to what am I doing? Right? What do I spend my time on? What am I working towards? How am I contributing and to whom or what am I contributing to? So those questions are a lot more specific and they're a lot easier to answer. They don't quite get to the ideal of who you truly are, but they do talk about who you're being in the moment. And if you think about it, when these overlap with our ideals, that is where true passion comes to life, right? When how I am being is really close to my true self, that is just joyous. When how I'm relating is close to how I really fit in this world, that's fantastic. And when what I'm doing coincides with my true purpose, you can't get a better definition of passion than that. For example, if we were to ask Dee Snyder of Twisted Sister, what, Dee, what is your purpose? I believe he might say... I want to rock, rock, do ba do 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 do. I want to rock, rock, do 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 do. I want to rock, rock, bo ba do 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 do. I want to rock, rock. I think you get the, the the point there. I think his purpose is that he wants to rock, or his purpose is to rock. And from the looks of it, what he is doing matches his purpose. He's totally rocking. And 
In terms of how sure he is that that's what he wants to do, if you look at this song, which I think I like the song a lot, but uh, it is repetitive. <laughs> he is super sure of himself. I don't know of any song where they're more sure of what they want to do. I want to rock, rock, takes up 48% of the lyrics. And if you consider wanna to be two words, that's 51% of the lyrics. The only other song that I know of that comes close is Parliament Funkadelic and how much they want and need the funk. So the question is, how do we get as sure about our purpose as Dee Schneider obviously is about his? And how do we figure out what our ideal self is and how we fit in the world? Well, I included a link to my website where you can download what I call a homework assignment for this video so you don't have to take copious notes here. But what we're going to do is we're basically going to uh, first take a look at those lists of values. That's what I want you to do first and figure out which ones are really important to you, which one really connects to you. And from that, I want you to picture a time down into the future. Whatever time period you're working with in this workshop, if it's a six months, a year, two years, five years, whatever it is down the road, picture that time. And if you did video two, if you did the work there, I want you to think about how you're feeling those feelings that you chose that you want to be feeling in the future. And you're meeting those needs that you chose. So you're feeling those feelings and you fulfilled those needs and all that while you are honoring those values you just chose. So now you're picturing yourself in this ideal future. Now I want you to answer these questions about yourself in the future. In this future state, who are you being, right? What kind of person are you being? What are you prioritizing, right? What do you like about yourself? How are you growing? What are some of your strengths? What are some of your weaknesses in this future state? Okay, and then move to how are you relating? Who or what are you spending your time with? How are you giving to those relationships and what are you receiving from those relationships? What communities are you a part of? How are you relating to your surrounding environment? Right, those questions in the future. And then again, in the future, what are you doing? What are you spending your time on? What are you working towards? What are you contributing and who are you contributing to? So answering those questions about this ideal state of yours. Now you might be thinking, okay, that's still kind of fuzzy in my head. That's, that totally makes sense. And that's why what I want you to do is an exercise called free writing. And that's where basically you set a timer for at least five minutes, probably 10 minutes would be even better. And as soon as you hit the timer, you just start writing or typing and you don't stop, right? You don't pick up the pen. You don't stop to think about what you want to write. You don't, if you're on the computer, you don't go back and correct spelling or anything. You just keep typing or keep writing until the timer goes off. Even if all you're writing is, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. This is so stupid, da, da, da. Eventually, your brain is going to start thinking of stuff to write. And since you're not stopping, it becomes a stream of consciousness. And it reaches in deeper into the brain than normally we get to when we're thinking. Because the problem is, usually when we're thinking or if we're writing, we're editing ourselves and we're rethinking and we're choosing other words or we're questioning this. But in a stream of consciousness, we just start making all these different connections that we normally wouldn't make. So that's why I want you to do the free writing. And I want you to do one for each of these questions in the future. So that would be uh, 10 minutes each, so a half hour of writing. You don't have to do it all at the same time. In fact, if you get a little tired after one, I suggest waiting and doing the, the next one later. So that is all going to help you create your vision for the future. Now you're going to take your work from that and you're going to take your work from video two and bring it and in video four we'll help combine those and clarify your vision so that it's something we can work with 
in terms of creating a plan in video five, six, and seven. So that's the first half of the homework. The second half is doing the same thing except for ta thinking about today or how you've been in the last few months, right? So think of the last few months or the last year, whatever time period you want, and then answer these questions again, right? So who have you been being? That sounds really weird. How have you been relating? What have you been doing, right? And again, answer those same sub questions in your head, but do it with free writing because that's again going to unlock a lot of stuff you didn't realize was up there. So another, so that's another three 10 minute writing exercises. And what that's going to do is give you something to then compare to your ideal future. And so that way you can look at who you, who you, who you are being right now or he, who you've been being and compare that to who you want to be. You're going to look at what you've been doing and what you're doing now and compare that to what you would like to be doing and how you are relating to people and how you've been relating to people and compare that to how you want to relate to people and relate to your overall surrounding environment, right? Other things, your life, etc. So what, you're, what that's going to help you do, and we're, we're going to work on that when we get to video four, is developing ways to harness your dissatisfaction with how things are now. So as you go through and shoot for your goals and try to keep your habits going, we can devise ways for you to keep your motivation going. Now, if you really enjoy doing the future vision stuff and you want more, or if doing those free writing samples didn't really help you create a vision or, or help you figure out your values so well. I did also include in the notes a link to a website where a guy basically puts together 12 different exercises that he found in different books, all based on figuring out what you want in your life and what values you want to hold on to. Right. Well, some of them are exercises you may have heard of before, like writing a, a letter to, to a future you, um, imagining you're going to your funeral, stuff like that. They kind of help you get out of your head and picture your life in different ways. And finally, if you, if you like this video, if, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button and that like button over there. Oh, and also please leave comments if you'd like. Uh, if you have questions about the homework or inspirations from the homework you'd just like to let us know about, uh, whatever you want to, whatever you want to leave, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, I do hope to see you in the next video. And until then, please do take care.